Well, hey, hey there, everyone. Welcome to uh, the New Year uh, Toolbox Tech Talk. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. It's great to be back. And uh, this year, we're starting with something a bit different. If those of you have seen the promo, uh, we're going to be talking about crypto mining today. And if you don't know what that is, you've come to the right channel. Uh, So I just want to let you know about a few things that are coming up. I've got some training courses. You know, normally I talk about solar and battery technologies and uh, um, a lot of detail around that. But today's a bit different but I still run courses in solar and battery standards. So for those of interested in knowing all about the the main three standards that cover our solar and battery industry in Australia and New Zealand, uh, that course is on the 12th to the 14th of January. It's all online, delivered via Zoom meetings. So uh, you can enrol at my website, solarquip.com. Following that, I've got a solar and battery design and install course. Also, it's fully online. Normally, I run those as face-to-face courses, but, you know, you can't go anywhere these days. There's always borders closing. So I do them virtually, uh, and they're all recorded, and you can watch them afterwards the same day if you miss out on part of it or you can't attend one of the days. So that's a five-day course, five half days in the morning. Uh, That's the 18th to the 22nd of January. Uh, Thanks, Thomas, for the Happy New Year, and g'day, Ray and uh, Frank there, um, I see your comments coming through. So just like to, to re- uh, emphasise that you're welcome to ask questions of myself and my guest, which I'll introduce in a minute um, as we go along, and those comments, I can bring them on screen for us to respond. So maybe check the spelling, check you know that you've actually asked the right thing, and also be aware that your social media pic will come on screen as well. So uh, if you're happy with all that, um, then uh, put some comments and questions into the, uh, into the feed. So we've got people coming in from... YouTube and Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn is uh, another platform we use here. So if there's anyone on LinkedIn, you're welcome to uh, uh, put some comments in there. So uh, you can also watch these afterwards, after the live's finished. Uh, They're still available uh, through YouTube, LinkedIn and uh, Facebook and even Twitter through Periscope. So you can uh, send them to friends to, to catch up. So what I'd like to do now is actually introduce my guest. Uh, my guest today has spent the better part of his career as an electrician who specialised in solar, air conditioning and electrical installations ranging from residential, commercial to utility scale sites uh, for the better part of the last decade. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Carl Zilm of Energyplex to talk about solar crypto mining. G'day Carl. G'day Glenn. How are we this fine afternoon? Yeah, well, actually, um, <laughs> it was been raining, and I was kind of just um, put in a new solar array here, and so I wanted to test it. And it's really annoying when it's raining and you're trying to test your solar system. But anyway, the sun's come out, and I'm happy now. And I'm back in the dark in the studio <laughs> doing my toolbox tech talk. How about you? What's it like over there in Adelaide? Uh, generating around. Uh 15 kilowatts, sending back around 14, back to the grid. So it's quite cloudy outside. All right. So. Okay. So you're grid connected and I'm off grid. So we've got different perspectives on this topic. So that's going to come about in a bit too. So I guess as yeah. I've kind of um, said in my promo, this is all about um, crypto mining with solar energy. And I guess the question that straight away comes to me, and I'll put it to you, is how do you explain to people what crypto mining is and why would you bother doing it? So by no means take this as as uh, financial advice. That's what I'll uh, definitely say first and foremost. Um, and do your due diligence before looking into crypto mining or if it's for you. So I see it as an opportunity for um, homeowners, business owners um, with uh, extra solar capacity uh, that might be export limited um, and need extra load. Um, on my particular house i can use my my personal example i've got you know 39.9 kilowatts of pv on 30 kilowatts um, of solar inverters so i have you know quite a big um, home size system and i was looking you know for a better return rather than my my retailers uh, feed-in tariff um, for the energy that i've been using um at the moment, today, it's around, do you, do you want to talk specific numbers or leave that for later? Or? Yeah, maybe later. So I guess um, keeping mm-hmm. it sort of simple, uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, people often say, I don't understand this whole cryptocurrency thing. And my cheap, 
um, cheeky way of responding is, do you understand how our modern financial system works? And it's, it's complicated, yep. isn't it? Exactly, exactly. To explain uh, blockchain technology, um, which was brought about by every, the cryptocurrency that everyone knows, Bitcoin, um, came about from the, the 2008 global financial crisis. Um, and as the story goes, uh, you know, a, a group of uh, computer programmers uh, got together and said, why do we need uh, a third party or a bank or financial institution to get involved with uh, transfer of money? Just in the same way as if I would, we were face to face, um, I would give you cash for a, um, a course that you would run, Glenn. So yeah. um, that, and it's, so it's trying to uh, digitize uh, human trust um, via blockchain technology. So uh, using cryptography, um, so in terms of the, um, the information that we extract from the blockchain, you can't, it's, it's completely visible, um, whereas you can't hack it. If that makes sense, maybe it's maybe very hard. before it's we very go, go down into the, the the nitty gritty of the blockchain, Carl. Because uh, look, yeah. not everyone here is quite as okay it it is with you. And look, I'm put my hand up here. I'm a newbie. This is like one week old crypto miner here. So um, my first thoughts were: so how does it work in terms of you know the history of financial institutions? So I've done a. I'll give a little um, thumbnail view of what I understand things to be. So. Up until 1944, we really had an ad hoc system of financial um, inter interchange of money between different countries and how you valued that. Then the Bretton Woods Agreement in 1944, towards the end of World War II, got all the financial big players from different countries together and they came up with what's called the gold standard. Many people still yeah. think we have the gold standard. We don't. It's long gone. So yeah. the gold standard yeah. existed as um, based on, uh, I think it was $35 an ounce was the to the US dollar was the gold standard. And the US held most of the world's gold uh, and so it would issue currency based on that gold that they held in reserve. Um, 1971 came along and I think there was a bit of loss of trust in the fact Petro that... Dollar? Uh, pardon? 1974, sorry. The, the, the transition to the petrodollar? Yeah, so, uh, was it 74? Or, yeah, 1974, uh, Tricky Dicky, uh, <laughs> the, the president of the US, um, uh, Richard Nixon, came got a little bit flustered with the fact that um, some countries are asking for their gold, not just uh, US dollars, which they were starting to lose trust in. It seemed that the US were spending more than they probably had in the bank. Uh, and so yeah. uh, that ended the gold standard in 1974. So with uh, Richard Nixon's announcement, surprise announcement. So at that point, we went to what we call fiat, F-I-A-T, um, which is word, Italian word for fierce uh, currencies, which yep. are based on uh, a country negotiating its exchange rate based on perceived value. So countries just issue currency uh, without any necessary reference to a real thing. There is no gold in the bank anymore. In fact, the UK sold off most of its gold just a, a decade ago. So really... Yep. Um, we're in a new time where we've got a relatively new financial system since 1974. Now, um, so we're not changing dramatically, introducing yet another way of trading value uh, with currencies, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, are we? Yeah, I, you know, and some of our viewers uh, might look into, you know, proponents of modern monetary theory. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, Glenn. Um, essentially... Uh, a country can issue as much currency as it would like, um, be it they go bankrupt if they're the ones issuing it. I think that's a, a lot, you know, in terms of financial, uh, there's, there's wide debate around it. Um, but blockchain technology and cryptocurrency is trying to um, take that third party out and just leave it up to the, the people as, as such. You know, it's too hard to ignore from from my perspective, though. Um, I've seen it, you know, grow over the past decade. I, I sort of read about it on uh, obscure online forums, you know, 2009, 2010, when it was, you know, $20, 30 um, And I wish I had a bought some back then. Uh, I think last night the, the price of Bitcoin, Bitcoin, peak to around forty three, forty four thousand dollars Australian. So I uh, wish I had of uh, 
got on board back then, but I was a little bit younger and I didn't, my financial situation wasn't as, wasn't as healthy. So <laughs> have you ever seen the photograph of the guy who, who bought two pizzas with 10,000 bitcoins back in 2009 when they were worth next to nothing? Yeah. He, paid, he paid $350 million in today's money for those two pizzas. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got some friends that have spent some bitcoins uh, back when they were worth not as much. So I, I know... I know exactly. <laughs> well, I'm going to take a pause. We've got a whole bunch of comments uh, coming in. Uh, no, no really strong questions. Uh, so I've got uh, a couple of happy new years. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, and uh, <laughs> thanks, Lily. So Lily's uh, sending us some good vibes there. Thank you. Uh, and also uh, some curious comments. So this one's from Kudra. Uh, very curious how you justify the pyramid scheme of Bitcoin as a battery. Maybe Dogecoin is better. Um, laughing, smiling face. Uh, so yeah, there's plenty of doubters, and I put my hand up as a as a doubter too until I actually can spend something. So I think it's uh, it's still you know for me something that I wouldn't want to bet my house on. But uh, we'll we'll talk a bit more about where there's opportunity that's not going to be high risk in a bit. Uh, and what else we got here? Um, thanks, yeah. Mark. Mark thinks I should have a. a pocket pencil and uh, a <laughs> some glasses and a multimeter around my neck. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I think I'll leave that one. And we've got someone asking about Ethereum. Now, we'll definitely get on to Ethereum because uh, it's it's more than just a cryptocurrency, So, from my understanding. So we'll, we'll get on to that. So some of these questions we're actually yep. going to cover in more detail. Um, and um, uh, what's this here? Uh, no, no. I explain. I'm just reading these comments here. So, and from David here, um, I explain mining to people I'm familiar as proof of work in verifying transactions being rewarding for work for the work. So, yeah. I think that's a really good comment, actually, from David. You've mentioned um, the blockchain already, uh, Carl, and and people associate yeah. blockchain as the same thing as a cryptocurrency, but it's not, is it? So you have uh, proof of work. Um, and also proof of system. So your proof of system um, comes, you know, is about solving your Byzantine generals problem, which is a computer science term. Um, you know, if everyone's, if we're attacking a, a city um, and uh, three generals are in control of communicating between one another um, and not knowing if, the other one is giving false information or, you know, as an enemy. So basically we need uh, two thirds of the, the blockchain or community um, to work together in tackling the problem. If more than one third of the, the blockchain, um, and that's, you know, and, and we, we assume uh, we're going into quite technical detail on, on how blockchain technology um, circumvents this uh, this problem that we have. Um, so no malicious or malign characters can get in, involved within the blockchain to corrupt the data or, you know, so each transaction um, uh, or miner, that's the, the technology um, that's used is a, a sort of like a node. Um, and these nodes verify transactions on the network within your Ethereum uh, database um, or, or blockchain um, or your Bitcoin blockchain. Obviously, we have uh, various other altcoins and um, blockchain available. You, you can do a quick Google search. And, uh, but Bitcoin is that first one that came to, um, to public uh, knowledge and that, that has solved that Byzantine uh, general's problem in theory. Can, can so. I can I interrupt again? Um, so my role often in interviewing people is to make things simple. So I'll, I'll see if I can kind yeah. of simplify something here. Uh, let's talk about um, blockchain separate from any cryptocurrency. Uh, so my understanding of a blockchain is that it's a, a distributed ledger of record of work done. Or and, and yep. the way it works is it keeps growing because the ledger keeps growing. So when someone does some work, they add that as a block to the chain of other blocks, and hence the word blockchain. Exactly. 
Okay. Exactly. And the so distributed ledger was, yeah, means yeah. it can't be falsified because of that Byzantine generals phenomena that it's distributed across many, many players. And if one person tries to falsify it, the others will say, no, 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 it's not true. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um, it's it's trying to like explain the internet, Glenn. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's another great analogy. And look, I've heard um, blockchain yeah. being used for other than cryptocurrencies, you know, for instance, energy trading. Uh, so um, Power Ledger, I know that they're, they're using blockchain yeah. technology. Um, even r regular banks using it as a way of verifying transactions. So it's just a, a more trustworthy transaction method that doesn't isn't owned by a central point. It's owned by all of the ledgers. Exactly, because it's decentralized, um, those nodes on the network um, give, you know, the trust within the network because it can, um, you know, obviously the more transactions within that blockchain, um, if you're a node or, or miner within that network, you get rewarded um, to help that blockchain keep on running. That is essentially what you're mining and you get rewarded um, part of that transaction fee um, in Ethereum or Bitcoin um, when you're mining that, that I'll put it in uh, uh, bunnies ears. Uh, that's exactly what you're doing. You know, you're, you're, you're just being part of that blockchain um, that's mining the data. Um, okay, I've uh, got some questions coming in here or comments too. So th maybe this is a good one because um, I hear this a lot. This is from uh, my, my good friend and former neighbour, Bob. Um, is it a win-lose situation? So my gain is someone else's expense. If so, as a beginner, I'm at, am I, I am at risk. So, No. So um, in terms of if you're wanting to join, join the network, I think the what he's saying is if, if you if you make some if you mine some currency or some coin is someone else losing out? No, you're just contributing to that um, that blockchain. So obviously, the more more nodes within that network, um, you know, the more um, widely spread uh, the you know transactions become within that chain. Obviously, the demand for um, computing. Um, power or you know your, your mega hashes is going to increase so uh, supply and demand if there's a lot of demand on that network um, transaction um, costs are going to increase so miners will be paid more based on the amount of demand within that blockchain so you know and that really depends on um, how widely known uh, cryptocurrencies or blockchain technologies are out there um, and how many people were using them. Um, at the moment, it's, it's very popular um, and it's only getting bigger. Uh, it's, it's very hard to go past. That's why I looked, um, looked at the energy usage, um, comparing, you know, if I was just to sell my um, extra electricity back to the grid or uh, get mining, mining hardware um, and get a better return on investment um through through that so in terms of mining i see it as i've got a, a as a miner um i've got a tangible asset to say an, or an insurance policy um where i still have good hardware as well as um and i'll use the australian government's um, official definition of cryptocurrency um is, is treated as property so it is subject to capital gains tax if you are to transfer it back into Australian dollars or, yeah. Right, okay. So, so there's a follow-up um, uh, comment from Bob. So this one is, uh, Bitcoin has increased in value exponentially, but everything exponential has a breaking point. What's the risk of people ending up with nothing? <sighs> you know, I think Bitcoin mining accounts for just under 1% of global um, energy usage. Wow. I don't think it's uh, going away. That's huge. Um, yeah, it's, it's huge. I think it's like 70 terawatts or something like that. It's the, 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 the figure's, you know, astronomical. Um, you know, we, we come from a very privileged country like Australia. You know, we have very trustworthy governments, um, you know, financial institutions. 
But in many countries, you got to think of uh, Bitcoin as a global um, currency of the people as such. So um, there's a lot of countries and banana republics where there are central banks and um, there's a lot of malign characters that get involved uh, within their banking organizations. And, you know, they can start printing more dollars or fiat currency. Um, and um, yeah, so the, the, the people of those countries, and I've heard of a lot of countries, and that's why there's been, um, you know, such a big um, uptake in Bitcoin was because it was the first solution where people can send um, or make transactions between family members in, in, in different places, at, you know, the click of a finger with no very little transaction costs. So, so I'm not sure if it's spent much money overseas or, you know, the, the prop. It's, it's quite a difficult. Um, yeah, it you know. solves the problem of, you know, having to use a middleman to transfer money and that they take their, they clip the ticket and take their, their fee. I mean, I've used Western Union once yeah. and, you know, it was a significant part of the transaction was the Western Union fee. So uh, it yeah. wasn't, wasn't very happy and it was awfully painful too So uh, to, to do. Yeah. So I've got on screen now just for those who... Um, to, do, to respond a little bit to Bob's question about price. Now, um, this is the price of Bitcoin, one of the many, many, I don't know how many uh, currencies there are out there, but let's have a look at the, the, the full history here. So if I click on Max, I think I can get the whole lot up here. Going right back um, uh, to, where are we? to 2014 so in terms of volume it was pretty insignificant um, even though the price was climbing then we had that big spike in 2018 where it hit 20,000 US a, a coin then then it collapsed and I think that's when everyone went oh it's just um, a fad it's going to go away uh, it doesn't and I, I must admit I felt the same when I heard that I thought oh well it's all over yeah, but look where we are now <laughs> yeah there's big you know uh you know, companies and, you know, Microsoft and, and PayPal accept cryptocurrency. So um, it's, it's, it's a big thing in, and it's very hard to go past um, the sheer scale of it and the growth, as you can see by that chart, uh, just on the coins value, as Bitcoin is limited to 21 million Bitcoins. So that's the physical size of the blockchain. Um, so you can break it down into uh, like the Satoshi denominator, I think it's point zero i can't remember how many zeros it is but that's that yeah yeah uh, you, you understand what i mean um glenn um and i'm sure if people would like to know more about it and uh read the public white paper on on uh bitcoin as per se but yeah um, Actually, I've got a question that relates to, to this. So this is from Thomas. And Thomas says, will there ever be a cap on the amount of cryptocurrency able to be generated in the world? Now, you just l listed the limit for Bitcoin was, what, 21 million, was it? Million. Um, Bitcoins? Yeah, 21 Bitcoins. million Bitcoins can only be created. Yeah. So what happens when you, if you ever do, get to that limit? What happens to the value of a Bitcoin? Well, it depends on how many people are using it, Glenn. So uh, supply and demand, um, and as as time goes on, um, and the more nodes within, you know, miners trying to create this this Bitcoin and get rewarded uh, for that for that creating that uh, that those those coins, um, the price will go go up because it's inherently that cryptography um, mathematical um, problem is getting harder. Um, and the amount of transactions, it's continually changing. And like we touched on before, all of those people say, um, uh, you know, is, well, I think we're getting a little bit, you know, is, is it ethical? Um, you know, and people say, oh, it's not ethical because um, people can be anonymous within the network. Um, whereas I would say, you know, it's some of the most traceable um, data records to date. Everything you can see, everything that's happened on the blockchain. So you can see um, if I was to send, uh, uh, if you had a, a public account linked to your bank account, um, if you knew that number, you can see I and uh, you knew my um, wallet address. I could send you um, uh, however many bitcoins. I'm sure you'd like that, Glenn. 
Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and that would be public information as such. That's open source. So you can see everything that's gone on with the network. That's, you know, like, yeah, that's okay. the difference. Qu questions uh, are coming in thick and fast, but I, I've got a comment to Thomas too. So I guess um, my analogy would be that mining real gold out of the ground is a limited resource and its value doesn't disappear once you've mined all the gold because it has an inherent value and people trust it as a, um, a, tr a trade of value. So we've kind of held on to that for, for centuries. In a way, if you build the same trust into a cryptocurrency, uh, it fulfills that same function, even when it's complete, even when there is no more to mine. So I guess that's the analogy is gold. Gee, the questions are flying in, <laughs> Carl. Let me just, uh, let me just, this is the, the most questions I've ever had. 20, I should talk more about then. cryptocurrency and less about solar, but there is actually quite a few questions yeah. relating to solar now. So uh, solar cryptocurrency, which is what we're all about. And uh, I can see, good day, Mark. There's a few uh, solar people there, I know. Um, so let's hang on, pick a good question here. So, um, uh, yeah, Mark's asking about uh, other, uh, other currencies. Uh, so why just Bitcoin? What other currencies are surging? Uh, what do you got to say? Yeah, I know Mark. Mark's a good uh, solar uh, solar from South Australia here, and he's a very good creator of LGCs. Um, what other, you know, I, I think I really like Ethereum. I personally mine um, Ethereum. I don't have any um, ASIC miners, which are application specific um, miners, uh, because it, you don't actually mine like. For, for everyday use, you, you, you mine Bitcoin with your S9s, I think you have, Glenn? Yep. yep. Yeah, so um, that's an application-specific um, device where it's just mining mining Bitcoins, whereas um, I've got, um, you know, a pretty formidable um, PC uh, with uh, talking in, uh, computer computer uh, hardware terms. I've got two 2080 Ti graphics cards in there, which are, you know, quite quite powerful um, for, for regular usage. And I thought, well, while I'm not using the PC, I can um, mine Ethereum. So I can contribute to uh, the Ethereum blockchain. And obviously the, the, the uh, use cases of Ethereum are, are quite high um, in, a, in a currency and yeah, there's, if I said I'd, I know it all, I, I, I'd be lying. Um, you know, that's okay. I, I, look, I think this, to, this yeah. is a, a topic that's got a whole diversity of structure to different levels of expertise. I guess we're just kind of doing a bit of an intro here. Uh, a question that comes up, and it was one of the things I wanted to get to about ethicalness uh, and is it good for the environment? And this is actually a question from, from Karma. So uh, Kudra Karma says, uh, uh, basically my position is crypto mining for currency is a huge waste of energy, especially fossil fuels. But hey, if you only use excess solar for it, go nuts. But better for useful stuff like research. Now, um, I'm not sure what he meant by the last bit, but uh, in terms of what you do and what I have been doing is exactly that, using mm -hmm. excess solar. Um, I mean, the way I got into this is someone said, I said I needed some load dumps and they said, why don't you use some ASIC miners? <laughs> and I go, what are they? And they said, I'll yeah. drop a couple off. So Sam, thanks Sam Frost, uh, dropped a couple of ASIC miners off and they basically load dumps for my testing equipment, which earn a little bit of Bitcoin on the side. Yeah, so, um, you know, there can be um, a lot more you know, less energy intensive way. Um, and when Ethereum, you know, now we're, we're starting to get into some real um, blockchain um, gobbledygook, um, when when Ethereum 2.0 um, is finally released, you know, over uh, 1.6, I think it's around 1.6 billion US dollars um, equivalent of Ethereum um, has been staked uh, for the new um, Ethereum 2.0 uh, network. I guess you, um, you know, and that's meant to be less and, and, and turn into a proof of work instead of proof of system. So proof of system is your, you're establishing the blockchain um, and proving that Byzantine general solution that it's trustworthy, that the information that people are receiving from that blockchain is trustworthy from the different nodes and yeah. So I hope that sort of... 
Yeah, but. there's a comment here from David. I th- think you might know David. Um, he says the majority of large Bitcoin mining farms are hydro because they actually need really low cost of electricity to be viable. Uh, and that's also the comment that yeah. um, that Jay Bates makes is that uh, it's no longer realistically to mine on a PC. Well, mm, um, I would disagree with that. <laughs> Having just used my graphics card, which I <laughs> mainly use for video editing, turns out it makes um, coin at about the same rate as my ASIC miners. No, so what you're doing, so that's through NiceHash then? Yes. So you're actually, so uh, NiceHash um, has a lot of, if you go to the plugin section, you'll actually be, at the moment, Ethereum is the most profitable. So if we, yes, so you're actually, you're getting paid in Bitcoin, but you're actually mining Ethereum. I didn't realize that. (laughs) Yeah, so that's what I really like about, so, and obviously it's changing from day to day, which um, software and algorithm is most profitable. And it depends on, um, you know, which algorithm has the most demand and of transactions um, to where the miners are going to be paid more. So I think, Hang on, one more question before you bring yeah. up some some yeah. some. I only got a, a screen to share, so we'll do that in a second when you're ready. But uh, Mark, who actually just popped out for a second, says, uh, "How much impact does DNSP, i.e., util- electrical utility network uh, charges, have on the viability of mining?" So I guess this is the I'm not using solar. I'm buying it from the grid um, sort of question. Is he in negotiations? <laughs> uh, I really, um, I really like it for grid stability for having, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure Mark. This is a bit of a plug for Mark with his Blue Logic software um, and the ability to switch generation on and off, um, you know, with the NEM or the, you know, the National Electricity Market. Um, I'm not sure at a DNS like. Obviously, I'm only doing it from a, a small scale residential, you know, no demand tariffs, um, anything like that. So I just have my fixed uh, daily supply charge. Um, if I was going to do it on a um, commercial property, um, like our workshop, um, we would obviously be hit with demand charges um, if we didn't have big batteries or anything like that. So I guess negotiating with a good retailer, I don't know if I'm giving Mark another plug here. You're welcome um, to. <laughs> he deserves a plug. He's doing great things, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, is is he bringing something to market? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sure. I'm sure. It, I'm sure he'd be thinking about it. Um, so hang on. Let's just before we go down that that little rabbit hole. There's a uh, question with an answer. So I've got Josh asking a question. Then I've got Julian. Thank you, Julian, answering it. So Josh's question is, what sort of internet data connection is required? Now this is one of my thoughts too, because um, you know <laughs> bandwidth is valuable, and I'm thinking, am I using massive mm-hmm. amounts of bandwidth? And Julian uh, helpfully replies, uh, Josh, internet isn't too intense can get away with MBN 12 plans yeah yeah to me I didn't know the answer for that I've got an unlimited package we share internet between three different properties so um, and we have an unlimited speed well, not unlimited speed but uh, unlimited uh, downloads and uploads so uh, yeah thanks uh, Thanks to that. So I haven't really monitored the usage. I'm not really... uh, So Michael's got the $64 million question, which is how many kilowatt hours of energy produce one Bitcoin? Um, So there is a conversion rate. Um, We can... Did you want me to switch over to that? Yeah. Why don't you share a screen? It's constantly constantly changing as well, Glenn. So um, have we got... You've got me? You're on screen. So, uh, so this is obviously going to be in US dollars because it's uh, an American uh, based website. I'm not sure I can actually change it to Australian dollars. Um, so we've got uh, your graphics card uh, plugged in there, which is the 3080, the NVIDIA uh, RTX 3080. Um, so I think it was, we worked out it was 90 mega hashes per second. We can calculate that. So at the moment, it's most profitable um, to be using the uh, the ETH algorithm, 
And as you can see, revenue BTC. Um, do you know how much your computer uses per 24 hour block then? It's using about 230 watts, uh, according to uh, Afterburner. So the card is, I guess the computer's got I think, yeah, watts. that's just the card, yeah. So, yeah. And it really depends on, yeah, what other cooling, you know, methods you have, fans. Just, um, just water cool it, CPU. So I, I'd put it around about 300 watts, 350 watts maybe. Yeah, so that's obviously how much Bitcoin. So if we do that calculation um, of, um, you know, mega hashes uh, per second, uh, or, you know, to, to mega hashes per second um, divided by how much energy usage your computer is using, we can see um, the, and that's plugged in. Oh, okay, so the cost of uh, zero dollar, I'll put, zero dollars per kilowatt hour in there um and because you're off grid so you wouldn't be using the energy anyway would you would you learn uh that's right it's surplus it. energy so you could say it's use it or lose yeah. it off grid um julian's just uh, helpfully given his experience so he's mining 20 uh using 28 kilowatt hours a day and generating around about 27 dollars a day so that's about a dollar a kilowatt hour that's pretty good uh rate yeah. of return yeah yeah, so um, you know, I, I'm I've got um, and it's constantly changing every day, Glenn. I think that's what we've got to we've got to realize. So you know, at the moment, I've got two 5700 um, XTs, which are an AMD graphics cards. I've got two 2080 Ti's, and I'm actually using my dad's new PT that we've just built for him, which has got a 2070 Super, um, and he hasn't set it up in his office yet. So uh, my mega hashes per second are around 250. Um, calculate that. Uh, so at the moment today is around $13.40 um, US um, or 0 0.00412 Bitcoin. Um, if we were to translate that, um, uh, translate that back into uh, Bitcoin, that Ethereum. So if you were using NiceHash, we would be paying, we would be being paid in, in Bitcoin. Right. So. Now, look, we're going pretty deep straight away again, so I'm just going to pull you up there. Uh, you've just mentioned yep. all these things like NiceHash, Ethereum, Bitcoin, etc. Uh, yeah. So there's more than one cryptocurrency as, as is obvious uh but there's also yep. mo different miners that you can use and different exchanges yeah yeah so um you know i use a few um and depending on what um you know what i want to do what's most profitable um obviously i you know usually go uh what to mine um I've already got it pre-loaded, um, what graphics cards I have, what my hash rates are. And you can see um, uh, all the other algorithms, um, you know, Zhash, you know, uh, prompt per MTP. Um, so Bitcoin is a, uh, oh, where is it? I mean, it's I've actually just uh, stopped sharing your screen. I was getting a bit dizzy with uh, oh. <laughs> the scrolling and uh, on a small oh, sorry, screen. Yeah. <laughs> you get a bit excited. Yeah, I, and also I want to come yeah. back to our audience because I've never had such a big audience. It's great to see you there, everyone, and uh, loads and loads of questions. Also, the audience is helping each other out with answers to questions like internet usage, et cetera, uh, energy consumption. Yeah. Uh, Jason points out that... Um, uh, it seems uh, he's tried to post a picture of his usage, but around about 350 megabytes per month, uh, assuming 24-7 mining. So, you know, that's, that's, Thanks, uh, that's just one Netflix episode <laughs> or even less. Uh, so it's not a, not a big user of, of data, as you can see. So data is not a problem. The energy consumption if you're using surplus solar. And now this is kind of where we started this whole conversation a while back was um, – is it worth mining or is it better to export the energy to the grid? Uh, you know, I've got a lot of, ex you know, on a good sunny day, I'm exporting over 200 kilowatt hours per day after my batteries are charged. So I have a 19.6 kilowatt hour battery bank um, that I use to power my miners, you know, run my air conditioners, uh, my dishwasher if it's programmed to go um 
on before the sun comes up or you know just your daily duties of electricity consumption um you know at the moment i'm, I'm receiving around 12 cents feed-in tariff you know um i'd love to be able to get more for that 12 cents but in terms of um you know i'm just reading that comment that just popped up on the screen um you know in terms of my rate of return per kilowatt hour used on my rigs if i was just being paid the 12 cents is around works out around 70 to 80 cents obviously depends on you know the market so um, what, way, way better than a feed-in tariff by a long shot way better yeah, and yeah, that's the point Julian was making too, and uh, certainly on the uh, Facebook forum, you know, it's really uh, a much better option is to use your energy, not export it to the grid, and the grid operators generally don't want it anyway, so uh, they're not giving you incentives to do it. So it's a, it's a great way of using up that surplus that you have from a renewable source. That's the key thing here. We're not actually wasting coal-fired power um, if we're using solar, and certainly if you've got surplus solar production uh, on or off-grid, uh, you can soak it up with with uh, mining some coin. Um, I just put up David helpfully pointed out because there was a question earlier on um, about from Michael Raken uh, about how many kilowatt hours to produce a bitcoin, and I just threw that up there. There it is again: one bitcoin ten every ten minutes. Wow, uh, at seventy two terawatts, that's insane. Okay, that's a very big number, um, and like you say, it's something like one percent of global energy use is mining. Uh, cryptocurrency which mostly i imagine is ethereum and bitcoin i'm guessing yeah so uh depending on what source you're really you know obviously who knows exactly how much um electricity is being generated at any one time it's not a publicly known um it's only going off estimations of what we have out there because obviously we don't we don't know the true amount of electricity being generated yeah yeah so. All right, well, let's come back to some of the questions I had for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> one, one I often get, or it's a comment, people say, oh, it's just make-believe money. How do you respond to that? Well, I'd like to use the government's declaration that uh, cryptocurrencies are treated as property um, and you know, are subject to capital gains, so be careful. Okay, you know, <laughs> so even if you don't convert them? So sure. if you've got, you know... So if you hold them, it's like a, it's like a house. It's an asset. It's an asset. Okay. Yeah. So if you were to sell that or transfer, um, you know, through to Australian dollars, uh, within, you know, obviously depending on the the situation, and I'm not a an accountant. I don't really offer financial advice. Um, I'm just a, a simple electrician. Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, look, at, yeah. Uh, we, 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 we have to make this point many times over that we're not providing financial advice and you should always do your due diligence yes. when entering into anything yes. in the financial matter. Don't take us as any, we're not registered financial advisors or anything like that. Uh, this is just a, a fun chat about solar and crypto mining. So Julian points out here that he's got 26 kilowatt hours of storage and 14 and a half kilowatts of PV uh, and he gets 15 cents kil per kilowatt hour for, I presume that's for export, but he's limited to five kilowatts of export. That's the other reason for mining is you may well have to curtail your production because you're limited by um, the regulations of your DNSP. And in this case, five yeah. kilowatts would be a third or probably you know, approximately a third of its generation is being, uh, 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 no, two thirds of its generation is being curtailed in the middle of the day. So you might as well use that, store it, yeah. and uh, or directly use it. Exactly, Glenn. Um, and, you know, I'm... Uh, I'm only limited to 10 kilowatts per phase export. Uh, when the uh, tech standard 129 was introduced into South Australia, um, you know, my old man and I sort of got together and said, well, we've got to really do something on our existing properties. Um, and we just went going home and put on, you know, Third, I think Dad's got like 39.4 kilowatts of PV on 30 kilowatts of inverter. Uh, he's got 26 kilowatt hours of storage. Um, I've got 39.9 with 19.6 kilowatt hours of storage. So they, you know, there was a big race. We had three months uh, to do three phase upgrades, you know, and install, you know, I think it was around 200 and, 250 panels on, on the two properties. So. 
Uh, and <laughs> our, our properties are, were quite tricky as their terracotta roofs and, you know, multiple aspects. So I wouldn't do the same systems. Uh, I wouldn't recommend the same systems on, on clients' houses um, just because that was very hard to squeeze it in. Uh, you know, as fitting, you know, 120 to 130 panels on a residential property as any good solar solar colour would know is very hard. <laughs> so, look, I'm going to go back to our audience. There's so much questions and comments coming in. It's just fantastic. So Ray, Ray's a, a repeat offender here at, the, <laughs> at Toolbox Tech Talk. Good to see you back, Ray. Um, he says, why not redirect uh, or buy an EV and redirect your solar into charging an EV? Well, uh, Ray, we've just done that. So here at the lab, we've just uh, purchased an EV just a week ago and we do use it for charging. But look, we don't drive a lot. So basically, we still have surplus. So yes, I, I totally agree. Um, use renewable energy for all the things electrical you can think of including an EV, which is a great uh, way of reducing emissions and your footprint, but then you're still going to have some surplus probably. Yeah. So that's the other issue. Yeah, we, uh, we, just yeah. one more. One we, more we, 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 yeah. You have? Yeah. Really? What have you got? Yeah, electric, electric forklift. Ah! <laughs> Can you take it shopping? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's actually really quick. Um, no, my wife and I are looking at buying an EV for, for our property, but like I say, on, on a good summer's day, I'm exporting 200 kilowatt hours. You know, the biggest Tesla, you know, P100D is a 100 kilowatt hour battery. So even even still, I'd still have, you know, on a, on a perfect day, 100 kilowatt hours of surplus energy. Yeah, I'd have to drive about so, a 1,000 kilometres a day based on the usage of our EV to soak up our surplus solar. So I'm not going to be just driving around the block yeah, for the hell yeah. of it. So, Troy, this is yeah. the other $64 million question when it comes to um, uh, mining and particularly uh, ASIC mining, Application Specific Integrated Circuits is what the acronym stands for. Uh, and I've got one right next to me. Why don't I just bring up a picture because I did kind of plan to show it to you. I should have gave you a quick peek. So this is one of the miners that uh, plug for Sam Frost. He uh, gave me a couple of these as load dumps, but also they actually work. Um, S9s are getting a little long in the tooth now, but they still work. So these are 1.375 kilowatts of power consumption each. Um, the little 12 volt power supply is pretty amazing. 133 amps at 12 volts it puts out. Uh, and that's how much this thing consumes. It's a lot of energy and it really screams. So um, ant miners, they're certainly the older ones I believe, are very, very noisy. I can't have this in the house, no way. Um, uh, I've got it in a back shed and even then I can still hear it a little bit. So uh, noise is an issue uh, but also the heat that they give off can be a benefit or a problem. So you can actually use them for heating. I mean... One of the suggestions that um, Sam was pointing out is immersing it in uh, in uh, uh, in oil and using the oil as a heat source that you could just you know, circulate around. So, yeah, uh, they do make a lot of noise. But if you're using GPU mining as you are, are they very noisy, Carl? So my particular GPU miner set, do, I think if we get uh, my setup, ah. Oh. I don't have it on this PC. Um, you know, I've got the same fans as on your particular ASIC miners. Um, so they're the Delta Delta fans, which can be like living next to a 747. Um, although I've taken measures to um, thread an air duct, you might have seen that, Glenn, um, to actually vent and some of the noise and also uh, the heat outside. Uh, I. When I first got my miners, I'd uh, set them up in my lounge room just behind me, and my wife came in, and she was, she's like, "You got to be joking!" <laughs> so uh, uh, she go, uh, you know, at night, she, you know, it was eleven thirty at night, and I still had them running, and I, all I'm seeing is dollar signs in my eyes, uh, or crypto, crypto signs. And she's like, how much is it going to make, you know, all night? And, and I had, uh, I think it was one or two GPUs in it because it holds eight. And I said, oh, around $5 for the night. And she goes, I'll pay you $10 tomorrow. How about that? Just to and turn it off. Yeah. Turn it off. <laughs> yeah. All so. right. So um, that's the noise issue, certainly for although, using ASIC miners. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Although you can, you know, like a... A, a traditional computer um, with traditional computer case fans can be quite quiet. I've got a friend um, that runs um, some six and eight GPU rigs um, in open frames. Um, he's got reverse cycle, reverse cycle ducted air conditioning, air conditions the room, 
and his fans uh, are really quiet, you know. Okay, so um, I'm, 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 God, I can't believe how many questions are coming in. So uh, you can't see them until I bring them on screen. So that's why I'm just interrupting you all the time. Uh, so Thomas asks about Power Ledger. So he, he just points out, wasn't Power Ledger, which is uh, uh, the first digital blockchain to be recognised as a currency in Australia? I'm not sure the answer to that one. But then Thomas follows up with, um, how do yeah. you see Power Ledger performing with trading energy person to person? Now, I think that's really what they're, they're all about is, is energy trading using the blockchain uh, it's not to my knowledge it's not a cryptocurrency it's a blockchain technology using it as a way of trading value or work done i.e uh, energy exactly exactly Glenn um, you know and as we touched on before blockchain blockchain technology is trying to explain the internet uh, there's so many use cases um, and it's not only for transfer of currency um, but transfer of information um, let's say we're all um, updating uh, or you know feeding electricity back into the network. Um, if we have some sort of um, interface that says uh, uh, you know we're sending back um, electricity, um, you know uh, that will give us credit, and then our neighbours using it, and they've also got access to uh, power ledger. I don't think it's live at the moment. Power ledger is that? Uh, um, is it still? Uh, I don't know. Actually, they visited me here at the lab some years ago, so uh, <laughs> I sort of had an initial connection, but I, um, I must follow up with them. Uh, so yeah. also got a question here, and I guess this relates to another one I had, which was about the economics of mining and getting into it. Uh, this person's asking any recommendations where to buy a mining rig. Uh, I mean, you can mine with what you've got, even just a laptop computer, but it won't be very profitable, and it's probably going to wear it out a bit. Um, but if you know, when you say a rig, there's levels of rigs, aren't there, Carl? Yeah, how long is a piece of string, then? You know, like uh, if you really go into the, the the mining rabbit hole, which uh, myself and a lot of colleagues and and friends have done, um, you know, it's sort of like my hobby now, and. Uh, <laughs> And I'm sure you're the same, Glenn. All you want to do is get more mega hashes per second, and you know every bit of tweak on Afterburner, and the, you know, and, and keeping those um, energy, um, the, the energy that those graphics cards and and, and miners, um, you know, you, you're trying to keep that as minimal as possible, and to get the most efficiency into mega hashes per second. So, um, touching on. Um, you know, is it expensive to get into? Um, yeah, sure, you can make it expensive, but, uh, you know, and if you want a higher return, um, and as with everything, there's a return on investment. Same as a, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to really give financial advice on, on mining rigs, um, uh, but, um, you know, return on investment for, for myself and my rigs, I estimate. Um, obviously, it's going to depend on that, that fluctuating um market uh, so around six to 12 months conservatively yeah so um and i'm still left with that hardware as well glenn so yeah know, that's what a lot of people <laughs> don't realize yeah, still, an, an, an awesome hardware. amount of computer yeah. equipment <laughs> yeah, that's right if you want to set up a gaming yeah. shop or something um <laughs> hey um david's just yeah. asked here and i think i can answer some of this uh, any suggestions on how to automate switching on and off mining rigs now david that was actually kind of my intro was how to have a, a load dump i mean i was actually looking at purchasing a load dump uh, a 30 kilowatt load dump, which was going to cost me a, an awful lot of money, basically a lot of um, software controlled heating elements. Uh, and then um, Sam said, oh, look, you know, why don't you use uh, an ASIC mining rig? So I said, but can you just turn them on and off? And he said, yeah, sure. I mean, they take about four or five minutes to come online, but they don't care if you turn them on and off. They don't crash and then burn. They're not like a computer, which you've got to, you know, nicely start and stop. Uh, you can just literally turn them on and off. So you can automate that with anything that control an electrical socket outlet, basically. So um, Smappy, Arduino, if this then that um, I've been using a device uh, Simon Hackett actually from Redflow gave me called the web switch which is um, uh, can be controlled by TCP IP or even Modbus over TCP IP so you can put some smarts into it so whenever in my case there is surplus solar on my off-grid 
mini grid. Um, it will then switch on the web switch uh, and soak some of that up with uh, 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 ASIC miners. So yes, automation, and that's I know that's a goal for you, Carl, too, is so you don't have to think about when to turn it on and off. Just let the, the smarts do it for you. Yeah, I'm in a pretty uh, unique situation where I don't really have to worry about um, usage. So I've just got my miners running 24-7. Um, you know, but, you know, there's plenty of, you know, solar inverters that are capable of, um, you know, see Julian's just, I think Julian uses his solar edge smart home. But, um, yeah, so our, our GPU rigs, I've got um, like a, like a mining specific um, computer or PC that you can just switch the power off um, and switch it back on and automatically got, uh, I've got a command, a startup command where it will automatically start my miner. So even if the power were to go off on that particular circuit, which is very unlikely because it's on my battery uh, UPS circuit, um, I'm not gonna actually, like unless the batteries were to go flat um, and then the power were, was to also go um, at the same time, you know, that PC is not gonna not gonna stop mining. Um, but yeah, switching is there's plenty of plenty of um, you know apps and smart PowerPoints and um, solar inverters and yeah, many third party um, switching applications there. All right, here's a question from Josh. Hi, Josh. Good to see you on the channel. Uh, so Josh is say, ask, asking, so the mi mining uses the graphics card, not the computer's processor? Yeah, so you can do, yeah, it's it's profitable. Mining with your GPU is profitable. You can use, and you can mine with the, the computer's um, CPU, depending on, uh, you know, what CPU it is. Like, I've got a, a, a quite a formidable um, CPU in my PC, which is the i9 10980XE, um, and it mines a different coin to Ethereum. It was mining um, XRP, which is Monero, um, and that was about two, mining about two dollars fifty equivalent of Bitcoin per day. But it was using two hundred electric, uh, and it's a quite an expensive um, CPU to mine with. So your best value for money um, and best rate of return is for uh, your GPUs or your application specific, um, you know, ASIC mining, um, CPU mine. It, Bitcoin, uh, from my understanding, started off as a CPU mining. Right. And then it sort of developed from there, yeah. Thanks, Carl. Look, we've got a question from your old man. Well, actually, some advice. Uh, <laughs> there's a actually, I know this Voss Coin. I've watched him on YouTube, so you know his channel is really interesting. Uh, I particularly like the one the time he went to uh, the biggest mining site I've ever seen with a two and a half um, megawatt uh, su power supply to the site. No, 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 no. that's a hundred hundred megawatt. Is it a hundred? Okay. Oh, maybe yeah, it's an old textile. Yeah, that's core scientific in Nevada. Um, so yeah, so I reckon that's the largest mining facility in the US. But those guys have got like I think six or seven um, sites across the US. Like they're humongous. Yeah. So um, I'm sure there's going to be some some. Some searching and I like Stephen's got a picture of one of his tyrannas there. I think. <laughs> yeah, so, that's, yeah, that's a little bit further along now. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> we're into our old bars, so we've also got a, a kind of workshop. So, <laughs> so, so there's a lot of AI like Metro Control or similar that can look at the NEM and therefore uh, make decisions about when to switch on. Certainly, when there's um, price signaling. So the, the ability to control something makes all of this, uh, you know, much more valuable. And I think this was pointed out way earlier today by uh, uh, by Jay, Jason. Was it Jason? Um, uh, by Sorry, Mark by Mark. Bates. Yeah, so Mark Bates, yeah. that actually consuming energy yes. Uh, yes. is just as valuable as generating uh, if, renewable energy. So when it comes to managing the, the uh, national electricity grid, and so actually having a controlled load uh, can be valuable. Now, that's something still to come with um, a change, rule change on the NEM, uh, but that will certainly be very, uh, very good signaling about, you know, using energy, you can be paid to use energy as opposed to you always pay. Yeah, so 
I, I'm not sure how many people or how many of your viewers, like I've got an app on my phone, um, which is uh, Red Dolphin or Pocket Nem. So I follow the uh, national electricity market um, off of an app on my phone. So um, at the moment, uh, the wholesale electricity price, that's the, the rate that uh, your retailer uh, can purchase energy if they don't have their own generation, um, is minus $1. So wow. that means if you're a generator at the moment, you actually have to pay to be connected to the network. Um, yeah. Uh, so so th is that Nemwatch you're referring to? Uh, yeah, I, I've got an app, uh, Red Dolphin. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's uh, Nemwatch Pocket Nem. Oh, think, yeah, Pocket yeah. Nem. That's the one. That's the free one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, the, just the free one. I'm not an energy trader, um, but, yeah, Dad has a lot of... Uh, friends in um, energy trading, so that was sort of his background, a, a fair bit of a fair bit of energy trading. So there's also Open Them, which is another good one. Uh, in fact, I'll just share that so you can see it. Um, here we go. I'll just bring it up on screen. Uh, mm. So yeah, Open Them. Uh, you can track at different time intervals, like you know the one day, three day, seven day, and this is the whole of the national electricity market. Or you can look at just a, a segment of it. So from uh, let's look at the Hero for Renewables, uh, South Australia. <laughs> There's an awful lot of yellow and green in South Australia at the moment. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. And you can burrow yeah. right down and see where it goes in the opposite direction. So that's when uh, it's you actually would be paid because it's going the wrong way. So there's surplus yeah. generation. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to point out that, you know, people might say, oh, look at that, electricity's, um, you know, really cheap and it's zero. It's, it's not good for the network to be cheap and, and, and free. You know, at the moment, if you've got a, a solar farm, uh, when the price is zero, you're getting no return on your investment. So, um, you know, as, as many people say, oh, you know, it's great, but it's not going to do much for, um, you know, we need more demand on the network, essentially, you know, and we need, we need to, you know, give, um, you know, and there's, there's plenty of uh, proponents and, um, you know, and plans for, for energy consumption and the, the undersea cable to Singapore, I think it is. Um, selling them electricity, but you know it would be nice to be able to use more electricity here. Um, and I think uh, blockchain technology can can assist in you know more demand within our network. Um, there's also um, and uh, I might give. Uh, I've also got a a friend and, and colleague um, that I was mentioning before we're off air that's got his own uh, cryptocurrency and uh, blockchain technology. Can I? Give a little bit of a brief go for it. Um, explanation of that going on. Um, so yeah, I've I've known uh, my friend. Uh, he's a he's a ER physician by day, so he works in a hospital, um, uh, and he's heavily into blockchain technology and um, has a, a a platform and and coin called Wager. Um, so. Uh, you, you can actually. Uh, are we uh, on? Uh, do, you, do you want me to share your, your your screen? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll do wager full screen, and I might send a um, an affiliate link. So you can actually um, go to to wager. That's w a g e double -R, r dot com. Um, it's a, a, a an online. Um, you know, uh, portal. It's been going since about. I remember when he got it up and running, and he's you know heavily into to blockchain technologies. Travel all around the world and um, goes to you know Germany and the US and has met with you know many uh, blockchain proponents. But um, this particular um, platform, you can. It's an online betting software using blockchain technology. So um, if we go. At the moment, this is what you can do. And he said, uh, if you uh, create an account, which is on your browser, you don't need an email address or anything like that. It's attached to your cookies on your browser and you give your uh, wallet address in the deposit section. Uh, David's going to send some, some wager through to those accounts and you can have a little bit of a play with some blockchain technology. Um, touching on another question, um, David's uh, platform is all open source. 
So, you know, I'm not probably the best person to explain it, but it's not energy intensive uh, blockchain. So, cool. Yeah, everything's, yeah. So, if you, if you want to know, you know, learn a little bit more about it, but yeah, his, you know, uh, we live not too far from each other. So, uh, and, and I've known him for, for a number of years, and it's been interesting to see his um, project and his, you know, implemented it um, with sports betting. So, um, yeah, so there's a bit of a, you know, uh, I'm going to minimize that now, uh, Glenn. Bring it back to the yep, I've got this back on. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a question for you, Carl. Have you ever bought anything with cryptocurrency? Uh, no, not personally. Not personally. I um, am diversifying my investment portfolio. <laughs> so I'm accumulating. <laughs> yeah, look, I could add a little personal thing. I was, I was sort of super excited. Like, you know, I'm a week old in this cryptocurrency business. So I thought, I'll, I'll see if I can spend some. You know, I've made 10 Australian dollars equivalent at the time. And yep. so I thought I'd just go and see. And no one wanted to take Bitcoin. And I'd searched around and then I gave up. So then I was just buying some um, green coffee beans the other day. And I just noticed on the checkout it said Bitcoin. I couldn't believe it. So I bought some coffee beans with Bitcoin. There you go. <laughs> There you go, Glenn. There you go. You're, you're, you're ahead of the curve. You're ahead of the curve. But the you, you, you hope that doesn't go up in value, though, and be worth $20. Yeah, all, all my <laughs> coffee beans suddenly should have been worth $350 million if I just kept the coin. That's right. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, like I said before, I've, I've had some friends that have spent uh, some coins many years ago now, and they sort of regret it, um, you know, from... But yeah, there's many, many uses, many uses that you can do with, um, you know, with blockchain technology. Um, you know, I think it's it's naive to just say cryptocurrency, whether, you know, it's it's the blockchain technology that we're looking at here. You know, it's it's like, um, you know, what were we doing before the internet? You know, I think is you know, in terms of uh, use cases, they're really unlimited when you when you really get down to the nitty gritty, and I'm sure there's many, many institutions and financial institutions, medical, um, the possibilities are just endless. And, you know, we're a global um, society uh, and dealing um, with information transfer safely where it's not, you know, centralised, um, you know, having as many nodes in the network and, you know, using that um, Byzantine uh, general solution and putting it into use, you know, it's still early days, but yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting technology. Well, we we come into towards the end of the session. And I just wanted to wrap up a few more comments and questions that came in. So, uh, Andrew Thaler, g'day, Andrew. Um, Andrew's been in this uh, mining business for a long time, back in two thousand fourteen. Hopefully, he didn't spend all his coins on buying pizzas back then. Uh, <laughs> so he was saying he had a, a liquid called um, uh, mining system. So cooling actually is a big part of large scale mining. Uh, and if you do have a use for that heat, you could think of it as, um, you know, tr uh, dual generation or even tri generation. So that's great. Um, Stephen asks, this is your old man again. It's good to have the family involved. Um, the question needs to be asked, will we ever see large electricity generators using crypto mining to hedge prices? What do you reckon? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be in, in lieu of, um, say you've got spinning generation and there's no load and the price is negative, do you just mine with it uh, at the generation site? Yeah, exactly. You know, like it's uh, energy trading if the network needs it for, for air conditioners and dishwashers and, you know, you know, we're starting to see a, a, the, the flight of Australian manufacturing, sadly. And, you know, who are the big energy users in, in South Australia? You know, one of them used to be Holden's. So, um, you know, now, you know, we really need some consumption and load back. And I think um, this is the solution. Um, I really hope there's, you know, some people that can put it into practice and we can get some of our hardware and, um, it's scalable. You know, you can start off in mining at such a small level um, and get your head around it just with your personal computer. Like, let's say you've got a, a, a formidable gaming PC, for instance, you're into online gaming. Um, 
you know, you can start and, and, and download a miner, um, open up a wallet, um, and, and there you go. You're, you're in the mining sector. And the important thing that I guess um, is security. So having um, two-factor authentic, uh, authentication um, on your personal wallet, um, you know, by means of Google Authenticator or having a YubiKey, like having a physical device where you physically need that, that YubiKey to, to log into your online um, wallet. Um, and also, um, you know, people say, oh, what about like, a, am I opening the system up to, um, to hackers on my, on, my, on my PC? On mining specific um, rigs, I don't suggest opening dodgy emails and downloading, you know, weird attachments that from, you know, <laughs> whoever, like I wouldn't recommend that. I'll, I'll you know, maybe just keep a, a mining rig separately um, and, and using that only for mining. Um, yeah, actually you know, security was something very, that straight away threw up all my antivirus software. I kept on thinking every time I went to download mining software, it said it was, it was, uh, you know, a, a, um, a bad, bad guy basically. Just, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, there's, there's a lot of tutorials and it's just the antivirus yeah. nature of, you know, but there's so many, like, like they say, uh, like, oh, you know, they can get control of uh, my miner. Well, you're going to see that straight away. You can go straight to your, if we pop to my my, my dashboard, Glenn. Yeah, gotcha. We on my dashboard. So, I, you know, you can see I've got three miners um, active um, on my dashboard at the moment, all mining into um, this particular um, Ethereum wallet address that I have, um, as you can, you know, it hasn't been running for very long. So, um, you know, that's why it's, uh, not the, not the biggest, uh, mining account and there's a lot, a lot bigger farms, but I've got, um, you know, three PCs on here. I've got the rabbit, which is my, my main, um, PC mining at, um, currently 95.2, uh, mega hashes per second. My, um, uh, my um, uh, miner that's located at the back. It's only got two GPUs in it at the moment. That's currently mining at um, 86.6 megahashes per second. And uh, my old man's PC that I just, it's just a fresh build and I've got it sitting over there in the, in the bar. Um, Making lots of noise. And, uh, <laughs> no, they're quiet. So my, my, peak, like, so my, my particular computers are water-cooled. Um, so, um, yeah, so the like water cooling is obviously very, very quiet. That's why people, you know, and also a lot more efficient. So um, in terms of GPU temperatures, uh, mining is quite um, energy intensive um, and also, um, you know, generating a lot of heat. So, you know, what, one thing people really, if they're going to get into it seriously, um, you know, you're putting your, your GPU under 100% uh, load. It's mostly using the memory of of your GPU or graphics card. Um, you know, and tweaking. Like we, I went through with you on on Messenger on running um, MSI Afterburner um, and undervolting uh, the importance of undervolting your um, GPUs. You know, the, the amount of information available um, online is is humongous. You know, like you can work out what particular graphics card that you have. What are the best settings? What are the best core clocks? Um, you know, memory clocks, undervolt, you know, all of that. Like I say, you can step down the rabbit hole and, um, yeah, really get really into it. It's like solar, <laughs> you know. Yeah, okay, it's well, like I've got a few more and we'll wind up. So, actually, one of my questions for you was, do you need to be a bit of a computer geek to get into crypto mining? Um, to get into it, not necessarily, like I touched on before, if you've got a, a, a decent PC, um, you know, there's a lot of um, tutorials and maybe that's something, you know, uh, the Smart Energy Lab or something can do is, um, you know, run, you know, there's, there's plenty of tutorials on, on YouTube on, on how to don download miners, um, you know, Phoenix Miner or Nicehash or, yeah, have a look on Solar Crypto Miners on uh on Facebook, that's a group that uh, Julian and I <laughs> put 
put on after it was uh, mentioned on the solar cutters. Um, I think we both thing, started but, uh, at the same group at the same time, like slightly yeah. different names, but uh, we're, we're, it was kind of funny. We're actually in competition. We're actually in competition, Glenn. Are we? Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know there was a limit to Facebook groups. <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, also um, Mark, th- Mark's giving me a bit of a plug. He goes, uh, mining is great for pricing. The network uh, ultimately going to be winners unless uh, me, Glenn Morris, can design an off-grid mine. So yeah, I think off-grid mining uh, it could well be a thing. Uh, if you've got surplus solar, on, you don't actually have to export energy to the grid um, and you've got plenty of land. So uh, that's something to, for, for further further discussion i think exactly if you're if you're, if you're paying a you know a whole you know if you've you know most you know residential um homeowners wouldn't be signed up with a retailer that's uh dealt based on fluctuating wholesale prices they're not paying spot price for their energy um you know it's good for uh if you are and if the price is negative but it's also you know let's say there's a lot of demand on the network and 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 wholesale prices are quite high it works on the other foot as well you can be paying quite expensive prices and um, mark's very familiar uh, with that side of things so um but yeah I, i think we need more load in the network so you know i think jump on jump on board the uh the crypto mining experience if you uh want a new hobby well, I think uh, I realised this topic is way bigger than I can cover in one toolbox tech talk. And uh, just by the amount of interest, this is like triple the number of people I normally have attend one of my my uh, live streams. So that's that's great to see. We're going to probably be following this up. Uh, so, Carl, I might be calling upon your expertise again uh, in the future. Sure. But uh, th- there's plenty of uh, I, online I sources. On, uh, What's that? Hey, oh, sorry, go. Okay. Uh, do you want me to get on uh, get on David? He's very, very. He would be one of the most knowledgeable in crypto. I think so. I think we need to go to the go, go, go to so someone who's got the uh, you know the depth of knowledge for some of these questions that come in. But uh, just another plug for solar crypto miners. So uh, thanks to yourself and Julian for starting that because it's all about self help. Uh, and my experience, because part of the question was you know do you have to be a bit of an internet uh, or a, a, a computer geek to get into this? Is it's really easy. I mean certainly with hardware mining using something like a hardware device. I literally turned it on, plugged it in, went. To to a browser, put in two strings of numbers, and I was mining. I had to set up a wallet uh, and at an yeah, exchange, yeah. but that was just a, you know a normal process of registering with a website. So really, uh, a very basic level of skill to get going with hardware mining, dedicated um, you know devices like ASICs. But when it comes to using uh, software, really, like you said, you can just download it. But I guess but beware, you are downloading something that's going to be co- operating your computer, so you probably want to quarantine it to a, a separate computer, not your, your main one that you use for work, because yeah, it, it, it also it does make it run a bit slow because it's using 100% of your, your everything often. So, yeah, that's that's the other issue. So, look, we've sort of come to the end of today, and this is also the longest Toolbox yep. Tech Talk I've ever done. So, really, a uh, big thanks to you, Carl, <laughs> for taking time on a Sunday to, to talk to me and all the audience here. And thanks to the wonderful audience for a massive amount of questions and helping each other in the comments. And, uh, Carl, you'll probably see them if you jump onto Facebook or YouTube afterwards. There's been a whole lot of discussion going on uh, parallel to us. But, uh, yeah, 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 that's a wrap. Not, not a problem, Glenn. I think um, I've, I've got some colleagues who are in talks of um, creating some uh, some user-friendly rigs, some pre-constructed rigs uh, for people that are looking to get into it. So um, it's still a, a, in the works um, and we're trying to put together a, a cost-effective solution um, for people that are you know, uh, looking to get into it. But, uh, yeah, it's still uh, early days. Great. We're still in alpha testing. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks, and I'll just roll the credits. And we'll see you hopefully uh, next Sunday, same time, same place for Toolbox Tech Talk.